Hello, welcome to Rainy Day Quick Play. I'm your host, Prince of Play Solon, and I want to show you guys a brand new game. It is on Kickstarter right now, and uh, if you've watched the rest of my, my channel, you'll know that I had a lot of games that I really loved. Long Live the Queen is one of them, and an oldie but a goodie. About three and a half years ago, I let's played a game by Major Bueno called... Oh no, what was it called? I know the developers, but I don't know the name. Uh, it's a Second Chance. A second chance, I toss it in there, like 15, like 10 minute video. One of our first rainy day quick plays. Uh, beautiful game, awesome game. This has the gameplay of Long Live Queen, based on Princess Maker series, where you are supposed to screw up a whole lot and make mistakes and amazing, wondrous, horrifying things come out of them with the style and insanity of a second chance. And so, uh, we're gonna go to the moon. We're gonna go to the moon a lot of times. We're going to shoot the moon if you play hearts. And uh, if you don't have a heart, well, this is probably the perfect game for you. <laughs> this is uh, Universal Happy Makers, the, uh, sorry, the astronaut best. Astronaut the best. It's a, uh, let's just dive right in. Let's dive right in. This is a rainy day quick play. If you wanna watch the rainy day long play version of this, Check it out on patreon.com backslash RDLP. So, let's dive, it, uh, it's, this is a demo, so it just starts right up. There, there's no, like, start menu for me to be like, oh, welcome to this game, let me just cradle you, oh viewer, into this game. Uh, no, no, we're, we're in it. So, welcome to our five main guests here. And I believe Coral Branch is our, our lady in the middle. Our middle mistress. Make no mistake, Director. The Flostrian space program is in crisis. Our rivals in Vladigar once again put us to shame. Do you know what they just announced? What did our rivals in Vladigar They're just immediately throwing us into... Let's talk about some villains. Vladigar. They sent a snake into orbit? They stole our engineering secrets? Or they made some blustering claim with nothing to back it up? Uh, what did they just announce? Let's say they sent a snake into orbit. Let's see how everyone responds to this. Blessedly, no. Our nation's children would never sleep again with space snakes to worry about. Earlier tonight, two Vladigar cosmonauts appeared on air to make a grave proclamation. They said they're better and tougher than our astronauts and could beat them up. They even challenged us to a boxing match to prove it. And then they said that we would be too scared to answer. All right. So, our, our cosmonauts are, are boxing? Needless to say, we cannot allow this challenge to go unanswered. Ignoring this confrontation would mean condoning the Vladigar's countless heresies. Unacceptable. They don't seem to like the Vladigar's very much. Just so you know, I personally think training our astronauts for safe space travel is your most important priority. However, certain neutral nations rate Flostrian policy as Namby Pamby. It may benefit our international relations to challenge those assumptions, just so you know. I love it. This is like my council in, uh, like, Civilization or something. Except they're just shady. <laughs> they're, like, the shadiest. Mm, so I got this, right? Space Mars. Just have your boys roll in there. Knock some snakes down and floosh. Call it a day. It is deadly to underestimate the serpents of Latagar, so says the teachings of Mongoose. Okay, so we're just kind of being just thrown in there. Uh, do we continue training as normal? The launch of our cosmonauts or our space, our astronauts, the best, is the most important thing. Or do we say like, ah, oh, it's cool. We got, we'll do a boxing match, and we'll, it'll make us better at training. Or do we just say, we're focusing on the fight, the only way to defend Flostry's honor. I'm kind of thinking, let's uh, focus everything on a boxing fight. This actually sounds like a bad idea. Like, like uh, Vladigar would take this from Flostria. That's us. Vladigar would be like, uh, all right, we're gonna trick them into a boxing match so that we can uh, make our space program better. And I'm like, kind of into that. <laughs> Wanna see where this goes? <laughs> sure, sure, we could shoot off to the moon or we could beat ourselves up. That's the human condition right there. 
Starnet's esteem rose by eight. <laughs> Starnet's super down with this idea. Just so you know, delaying the launch is not an option. Winning this fight will only raise expectations for our space programs. Just so you know. Ruth, so shady. I like her. Yeah, she don't like me that much. I feel you. I get that. I think maybe I like her more that she doesn't like me. Maybe I'm okay with that. Yeah, once you beat up those snakes, the launch hype is just gonna bust through the roof so hard it'll beat you to space. We have already accepted the challenge on your astronauts' behalf. The fight will be held in 10 days. Two of your astronauts must be at peak fitness by then, as it is traditional tag team boxing match. Oh! So we're like, of course, your traditional tag team boxing. All right, we don't even know necessarily what's going on. We're just being, we're just being thrown in. That's called in media res, of course. We're gonna just dive right into the glowy, what are these pentagons? <laughs> glowy pentagon space. At the top, that's in the cold bloods, but those cosmonauts with some stone chiseled specimens catch me. We can't even have our guys looking doughy. I guess the good news is, this kind of helps your astronaut training. Because they all need to get into shape. Morning, dude. You're too sweet, too precious for this. Yes, it is vital training and any flostry and astronaut must be ready to do battle with a serpent at any moment, even in space. Space serpents. <laughs> Ten days. Train your astronauts wisely. This is the conceit of the demo of this game is we have ten days to train our astronauts in a boxing match. And what astronauts they are. Hmm, the weather looks very sun out there. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at what's going on around us. We've got, it's May the 7th. We have 100,000 of the Ks and zero the glories. So we probably want to get some more glories. We have a mission, it's a matter of pride. Two astronauts must participate in a boxing bout. Let's look at our astronauts, learn about our candidates, and modify them to be them better. Okay, so we have Tranbeck, Wolfburger, Bellhead, Helway, and Bull Cannon. Look at all my beautiful palette swapped, beautiful hair people. I got two blues, a purple, a yellow, and a and then the, the burnt sienna. This is great. Bell. I'm sorry, Bat Bellhead's most striking feature is that he has the curse of vampirism. Dang, holy crap! Whatever that means, it sounds awesome! <laughs> Although, maybe that means he needs, like, human blood to survive or something. Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Bellhead's not as much an asset as he looks. Looks great, though. Leroy Helve isn't just the man who's whimsical, he also has views heretical to sun! He hates the sun! <laughs> <laughs> Bull Cannon, what most people first notice about Ashley Bull Cannon is that she is a dignified elephant-like countenance. She looks like an elephant. Wait, is that like a weird body thing or like she has a dignified elephant-like countenance like I I don't know what that means, but I kind of dig it and it's level 3 apparently, which makes what is this one? Purple beauty. So dignified means that her charisma is really high, but the uh, elephant-like countenance makes her beauty very low. Interesting. Okay. I don't really know how to read into that, but it's... <laughs> maybe it's, I feel bad. I feel like I'm judging all my astronauts. But I also kind of feel like they deserve it, because they're going to be thrown into space. So, uh, I don't know. I have, I, have, I have to deal with this in a business manner. That's how I have to deal with it. I have to understand that their birth signs are Falsetto Mountain, Sweet Cactus, and, uh, oh, two sweet cactuses. Excellent. Birth sign, Fashionable Orb. Wolfberger's most striking feature is that he is needlessly pedantic. Okay, so it looks like everything kind of has pros and cons, except for being a vampire. Being a vampire seems like it's just straight up awesome. Maybe there's a con hidden in there somewhere. What most people first notice about Eve Astrid Tranbeck is that she is deathly afraid of pigs. Which somehow makes her more beautiful. I don't know if pigs here is like a metaphor or like... If she's literally afraid of hogs. Don't keep- put that boar away! I don't need it near me! I just 
Keep your Razorbacks to yourself. I am a pigless person. That's our Eve Astrid Tranbeck. Okay, so we do have two people who have decent fitness scores. And we're looking at that fitness like, all right, I got 10 days. How can we move it out? Tranbeck is one of them. Uh, Wolfburger isn't. Bellhead isn't. Uh, Helve isn't, and I think Bull Cannon is our second one. That Falsetto Mountain birth sign apparently is what there is. But there's all these hidden traits, too. We've got each of these guys has four hidden traits. Well, I guess if you're heretical to Cora Blanche. Oh, that son is Cora Blanche. That would be a hidden trait. Okay. But everyone has mostly four traits that are hidden, which means that those could influence our scores a whole lot. Let's see if there's anything in the inventory that we can mess with. Some consumables, some reagents. Look at all these nice transitions. Are you seeing this? Like, this game's transitions are sweet. Uh, no, you know what? Let's not get into inventory yet. Let's dive into our first activity of the day. So, here's our cast in the cor corner. Here's our cast in the corner. And we're going to select an activity. And we have three options to do for today. We have a brochure. The astronaut's pictures will appear in a brochure at the lobby. We could do some public exercise. This will be our physical one. Looks really appealing. Or we could direct a stunt show. Which looks like it's a harder one. It's harder than the rest of them. Or astronauts will coordinate a space-themed amusement park stunt show. This is a really... This is a myriad group of... I guess these are myriad, like, activities that one could do. And none of them seem very astronauty. But I guess we can do whatever we want, huh? So, okay, we can go to the Space Academy. We get glory, we get money, and bonus prize is glory. Bonus prize is a reagent, an item of some sort. Or a stunt show. It gets you a lot more money. So because it's a di more difficult one, you get more money out of it. Okay, this makes sense. Let's dive in before we talk more about Astronaut the Best. Let's just dive right in to getting some fitness going. We'll pick one and two, so yeah. Tranbeck and Bull Cannon will exercise in public, and it says that back here, everybody else will rest. So if we put these in, we will start the day with Tranbeck and Bull Cannon exercising in public as our first activity of our 10-day excursion towards becoming the best boxers in astronautdom. Welcome to the all thing I, Flostry's most trusted source for news and entertainment. Now, my sweet goldfish, a special treat will be watching the Flostrian Space Academy's astronauts so you can judge them. Two of FRSA's finest will attempt to show their strength in the FRSA's physical exercise open to the public. We now take you to Space Academy, where our correspondent Holly Hemlock is standing by. All right, I guess we're kind of Holly Hemlock. I'm looking at everything. I see we got our two choices. And... Up here it says that we are doing public exercise, part one of three, sitting up. And our rating is currently blue. It is okay. So let's put Bull Cannon in because they represent the blue crew. National security reasons, we can't actually show the astronauts at work. Luckily for you, my lambs, the eye has something better. Our panel of judges will use this delightful rocket ship to visualize the astronauts of form. Will it reach the moon bell of success? Now the question becomes, whose expert analysis will be called upon to judge this task? Okay. So I've got three options. I've got the psychologist, Star Knot, who's who we're friendly with, and Morning Dew, who we're neutral with. And it looks like each of them has their own difficulties. Psychologist, though, rewards us with a trait hint. And the other two reward us with favor. So I think that I want to see what the psychologist does first. I think that'll be my first choice before we start trying to vie for favor. We got like 10 days of this, so let's see what's going on first before we get too before we get too sketchy. We got a 63% odd of chance of success, which is not I mean I wish it was higher, but as far as uh one of these kinds of text-based roguelikes like Long Live the Queen, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good, all things considered. 
Oh, Bull Cannon is attempting to sit up many times. Can her muscles take the strain? I don't know. I love her. Look at her recorders. A reporter. That chiseled jaw. Super down with these, like, in inlaid drawings, caricatures of people. They're just gorgeous. They're gorgeous. They have just such a tight aesthetic to it. Okay, okay. Hey, okay, we made it. I don't think it gets any more substantial than that. Cool. Ashley Bull Cannon's stress rose by 17, and they got fitness knowledge. That's what we want. Okay, cool. Ashley Bull Cannon definitely panics and become ineffe ineffectual when she's on the cusp of success. <laughs> no! That's not a good hidden trait. Success hysteria. Oh no! That's the last thing that we need in a boxing match! I can just feel our humble brilliant show's ratings increasing as we speak. So apparently ratings has something to do with probably how much you get paid or something. Hey everybody! If the astronauts succeed and gain us ratings, they'll win not only glory, but also cash. Cool. If they do an exceptional perfect job, they'll get a titillating bonus prize. <laughs> I love that our entire space program in this country is not based on, like, government resources out of the goodness of, like, for the progress of the country as a whole. It is just out of popularity. <laughs> is your, are your cosmonauts, are your astronauts famous enough to deserve the, the people of the public's approval? And look at all these, it's like a bunch of, like, caricatures of, like, rich people, I guess? I don't even know. Actually, I don't even think that's a fair assumption. Like, just, I'm looking at all these faces, and they all just scream to me, like, We're better than you, and we have the power to make or break you. So if they fail, they have to pay us money. So I'm sure they'll be on their best behavior. Okay, so everything just, everything's hanging on a string. So Bull Cannon totally won and got out of it a bunch of stress. Other than that, we learned a lot about their hysteria. Uh, so she also, now she becomes, she panics and becomes ineffectual on the cusp of success, a former fashionista. She knows about beauty firsthand. Okay. Let's try Tranbeck this time. Let's see if Tranbeck can show us anything. Oh, we have different judges this time. So we have Connoisseur, Rube, and ombudsman. A milk toast judge who will not say anything controversial. A judge who's easy to win over, but whose lack of credibility will limit your rewards. Doesn't look like there's any rewards for either of these two. Just one's harder than the other. But the connoisseur gives you extra glory. And is much more difficult. Alright, let's go with the rube. Let's make things easy on ourselves. Tranbeck is attempting to lift a weight of some sort. <laughs> I'm gonna go lift a weight now! You, you got this? You got this? Oh, we got this. Okay, good. I think we'll be hearing a lot about this last in the future! Oh, that was more stressful than the last one. Even though it was an easier difficulty. Ashley Bull Cannon's success hysteria was triggered by being near success. Oh no! She can't even be near it! She's inconsolable! Okay. So what does that mean? There's nothing on here that shows that she's having hysteria, like it's not added to her stress at all. I'm just gonna like... I'm gonna let her be. I'm gonna see if maybe... Maybe we can cool it somehow. Uh, Tran... Tranbeck, can you... can you take us out of here? Okay, we got the connoisseur again, and we got Rube again, which worked fine. It just like, didn't give us a lot. Or we can have the coach, who gives us XP, extra XP, than what we already get in the thing. That actually sounds like a great idea. And even if we lose, then that's okay. Tranbeck is going to jump a rope. Can she jump to space? That, that was a joke, Ignaeus. She's gonna, yeah, she's got this fine. Look at that, that's fine. I'm not totally sure what the rocket ship means, but it seems to be going well. 
utterly world class. Oh, uh, there's all these transitions that like flash in. They like throw, they pelt you with these dodgeballs of transitions and they look cool. And sometimes they just get in the way of all the information. I've got information over here. I've got information down here. I've got information way over here. And I'm just like, it all looks so pretty, but I don't know if it's, it just, there's a lot happening in a lot of different places. This was, um, this was Long Live the Queen's biggest issue because it followed Princess Makers, who also had the same issue, was an abundance of information that was super helpful, uh, but not necessarily in the, not necessarily in a way that made sense, that, that made it easy to comprehend any changes that were happening, anything that was growing or moving or changing. And so seeing where this is in its current state, um, we could uh, we could see a lot of growth through here. I guess that was all the tests remaining. It was like an Illuminati symbol all of a sudden. Tonight, a triumph of the space agency. Let's look at tonight's numbers. We got some glory. We got some income. Cool. Audience rating gave it a 115 out of 100. We did great tonight, apparently. But don't touch that dial because Sir Lizard Brain's Children's Hour is up next on FBC One. Cool, first day of astronaut training went pretty well. <laughs>